Well, throughout much of his presidential campaign, Mr. Trump rallied against Carrier's decision to move a factory to Mexico. Back in June, even President Obama weighed in on this and mocked Trump for saying he could get Carrier to stay. We have the tape. Here it is. Trump came to Indiana and talked a lot about what happened with the Carrier Corporation and shipping their jobs out of state. Here's someone who worked for Carrier, and he has a question for you. How are you doing, Mr. President? How are you? My name is Eric Cottenham, and I'm representing the uh, Steelworkers Union, mm -hmm. Local 1999, and I'm trying to find out what do we have left as far as um, all of our jobs are leaving Indianapolis, right? And uh, I see here you're doing a lot of things, but in Indianapolis, there's nothing there for us. I mean, what's next? I mean, what can we look forward to in the future as far as jobs, employment, whatever, because all of our jobs is left or in the process of leaving, sir? When somebody says, like the person you just mentioned, who I'm not going to advertise for, that he's going to bring all these jobs back, well, how exactly are you going to do that? What are you going to do? There's, the, there's no answer to it. He just says, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to negotiate a better deal. Well, how, what, how exactly are you going to negotiate that? What magic wand do you have? And usually the answer is he doesn't have an answer. And yet there was an answer today. 1,000 of those carrier jobs are apparently staying in Indianapolis. Joining us now to assess all of this, Eric Guster, trial attorney and political commentator. Eric, it's great to see you. Great to see you. There was a time when liberals were skeptical of unrestrained capitalism. And then somewhere along the line, they embraced market fundamentalism, and they speak like President Obama does, sentences like, there's nothing you can do. These are market forces beyond our control. We're, we were an industrial economy. Now we're not. Get used to it. And yet, Trump is kind of proving that's not exactly right, is it? Trump is not proving that's not exactly right, because Trump backpedaled on some things. First, he said, I'm going to put the hammer down on these companies. Yeah. They'll be scared to leave. And he's given them a $7 million incentive. That's, yeah. what he, that's what he worked out with Pence. Now, I don't know a company around that won't take a $7 million incentive. You know, where do you sign up for that? Well, I think it's, it's pretty common, actually, that states and municipalities make deals to get companies to, to stay there. But I mean, yes, but, but that's let not me, what Trump let said. me ask you, I mean, ask you a question. Is it really the position of liberal Democrats that it's wrong to use government policy to influence markets? Is that what you're saying? I mean, isn't this the kind of thing I would think liberals would be in favor of this? I mean, government has always instituted policy to try to help markets as far as uh, different incentives for companies to stay, different incentives for people to build, just like federal tax credits to rebuild buildings, old buildings. So, of course, the federal government has always been there. But the issue that we have with what Trump has done is he has flipped the script. He said, I'm going to put the hammer down. They're going to be overly taxed because if they go to Mexico, yeah. going to be, I'm the big bad wolf. And then he give the, gives them incentives. So he that's used to, that's he, the total opposite thing. Well, he used a lighter touch than he said he would, which is probably what? not the lighter touch? You know, I'm going to said, tax you versus give you seven oh, million no, bucks? No, but what I find so seven interesting... Seven million dollars? Well, I mean, I don't know, for a thousand jobs. And what, what's the cost? But they lost... They lost what six hundred. Yeah, they did. Too. They, they yeah. did. So well, they, they didn't. He the, didn't stop the whole thing like he like he was. The touted. truth is, in Mexico, carrier workers make about eleven bucks a day plus benefits. In Indianapolis, they make thirty bucks an hour. So you know, it's it's a hard sell mm -hmm. to get them to stay here. But it I'm is. just so interested to hear liberals like President Obama talk like teenage tech billionaires when they say things like, "There's nothing we can do." You know, the wheels of capitalism roll on, and if you're crushed beneath them, tough luck to you. When did that change happen exactly? He, we don't talk like that. I mean, he the, does. There's, no, no, well, there's nothing you the, can do. The You're good teenagers, the teenagers, Trump on his on his Twitter feed. Now that's the teenager. But I'm who's just in saying. Equation. I mean, Obama's position is the same as Hillary Clinton's and Nancy Pelosi's, which is you're seeing your good-paying jobs that confer not just a salary but dignity disappear to third world countries because we get cheaper labor there and we can't stop it. There's just nothing we can do at all. Like, when did that become liberal orthodoxy? The, the government has to do a better job to keep companies here. I agree with that. Oh, okay. We, now, I do agree with that. We have to do a better job of keeping companies here. And I don't have a problem with incentives, but I have a problem with Trump claiming that he's going to punish people, then giving incentives, which is to the total opposite of what he said. Because he, pr he put himself out as a big bad wolf, I'm going to stop them, they're going to be afraid to leave. But what these companies are going to have right now, some of these companies are going to threaten him, say, I'm going to leave, and then they're yeah. going to try to get an incentive package. I, mean, I, I think, don't know a company alive I, I don't that think wouldn't. you're making a crazy point. It makes me uncomfortable when governments favor one company over another. We saw it a lot under the Obama administration with Solyndra, et cetera. 
But I also think as an economic matter, you could make a cost-benefit analysis. Unemployment has really high costs for taxpayers. Oh, I agree. You have unemployment benefits, but then you also have all kinds of welfare programs, addiction treatment. I mean, there's just, it cascades down. So is it really a bad deal to spend $7 million bucks to save 1,000 jobs? Maybe it's a, it's a net plus, actually. It, it's not a bad deal. Okay. I'm not saying it's a bad deal. I'm, I why own not just several celebrate companies. It? Why, not just, why not just say, you know what? I don't because like Trump, Trump that is but not he what did Trump a good sold. thing. That is not what Trump sold people. He told people, I'm going to tax them, and that is what's going to keep them here, not give them incentives. I'm a business owner. I'm a real estate developer. Incentives drives the market. If you have a, three buildings you can choose from, one right. has incentives, two don't. You're going to pick the one with incentives. That's just the way it is. And that's the way companies are driven as well. If you can get tax breaks by hiring veterans, if you can get tax breaks by hiring teenagers who right. may have been in trouble, you're going to take them, of I, course. Just for whatever it's worth, I don't actually think as president-elect he can change our tax code. So that may, <laughs> may have something to do with the way he approached this. I don't know. Eric Custer, it's great to see you. Great seeing you, too. Thank you very Congrats much. on your show. Thanks. The president-elect is not the only one hustling toward Inauguration Day. The current commander-in-chief appears to be trying to leave as much of a regulatory footprint as possible. Chief Washington correspondent James Rosen shows us how. President-elect Trump said the biggest surprise in his experience as a politician thus far is his discovery that business leaders are more apt to cite regulation rather than taxes as the biggest drag on growth. Since about six years ago, 260 new federal regulations have passed, 53 of which affect this plan. 53 new regulations, massively expensive, and probably none of them amount to anything in terms of safety or the things that you'd have regulations for. In fact, the executive branch is on pace to enact more than 3,700 rules and regulations this year, a new record, with the Federal Register on pace to exceed 87,000 pages, also a record. The White House said President Obama's directive to review red tape, issued in 2011, has purged more than 70 notable regulatory provisions and saved Americans $37 billion. The regulatory work that's being done in this administration uh, is uh, not going to be characterized by a last-minute rush uh, on the way out the door. I think what it will be characterized by is a uh, continuous and persistent effort to complete the work that's already been started. Items currently in the pipeline range from community college debt forgiveness to the number of engineers required on freight trains. Mr. Trump has vowed to carry a war of attrition to the regulatory beast. I will formulate a rule which says that for every one new regulation, two old regulations must be eliminated. So important. But the White House voiced skepticism. That's the kind of thing I think that probably sounds pretty good on the campaign trail, but maybe a little bit more complicated when you implement it. As of Inauguration Day, Congress will have an option to reject rules and regulations enacted since mid-June. But many Obama-era rules and regulations from before then can also be nullified through executive action, non-enforcement, and other means. You know the regulations are going to be rolled back that are coming forth from Obamacare. You know that's going to be the case with financial regulation. Trump is definitely going after EPA regulations and other rules that have come out over the past year from energy departments say all of that stuff can be frozen. A study released this week by the American Action Forum, another group that favors deregulation, found that recent EPA rules on heavy trucks pushed the total regulatory price tag over the next 10 years over the one trillion mark, an accounting that will require every man, woman, and child in our regulation nation to cough up $3,080 apiece to satisfy it. That also is real money. Brett. Big tab. James, thank you. you bet.